Hey there students, Nathan here from Accounting University and in today's video we're going to be talking about weighted average inventory. We're going to go through some examples and show you how to calculate it using a real problem. Let's get into it. All right, so weighted average, how does this work? Let me get rid of this ad here, it's not distracting. Weighted average is kind of what it sounds like. It is the average of your inventory. And so what you're really doing here with this inventory is you're taking your total inventory cost and dividing it by your total units. That's it. And that's when you get what we call your average cost per unit. Then you apply that cost to cost of goods sold and ending inventory. It's a lot simpler than LIFO and FIFO where you have to either like look at when the units were brought in and go from there. But with weighted average, you just get the average per unit and then assign that cost to your cost to get sold and any inventory based on the number of units that are in there. And so that's really the basic gist behind it. It always depends on you know what the cost of your inventory is and how it affects your income or your assets. But with weighted average, it's it's hard to know. You have to get the average first to see how it's going to affect your balance sheet and your income statement. So there's no real hard rules there, kind of like what I did in FIFO and LIFO video. If you hadn't seen it yet, make sure you watch it. So let's go ahead and look at a full problem here. I'm going to use similar numbers as I did with the other FIFO and LIFO videos to show you how this ties in. Let's take a look. So. As you see here, and I won't zoom too far in, um, I'm gonna have the number of units here, cost per unit and the total cost. And right down here, uh, it should say a thousand. That's the total cost of that last batch. Oh, okay, I'll have to write that in, looks like. So, thousand dollars. All right, so, and let me move that up. There we go. Okay. So let's act like we go ahead and make a sale here. We're gonna make a sale for, we'll sell, I don't know, 80 units, okay? We're gonna sell 80. So the first step here really to get your cost per unit, and we need to get our total inventory cost, which is right over here. It's the total of these four. So let's go ahead and add them up from the top. So we have 450, 384, 396, and 1,000. So that's our total inventory cost. Again, I already calculated it for you. It's just your units times your cost per unit. And there's different dates and different batches of units on each date. So I got a total cost here of 2,230. So that's our total inventory cost there. From here though, we're gonna get our total units that we had in our inventory. So we're gonna add them up, starting from 25 all the way to 40. So 25 plus 32 plus 18 plus 40. And you get 115. That's how many units we had in our inventory. So to get our cost per unit, I'm gonna go ahead and just create a little separation over here. We're gonna take our cost of 2,230 and divide by our units, which is one, one, Five. Let's divide those out. 2230 divided by 115. I get a cost per unit. It's a little bit awkward number. We'll uh, round it up. So we'll do $19.39. Okay. The next step, now we have our cost per unit. We need to assign it to our sales to get to cost of goods sold. So COGS, we multiply that number, the one we just got, $19.39 times our 80 units we sold, and that's gonna get our cost of goods sold. So 80 times $19.39, cost of goods sold is gonna equal 15,000, or no, sorry, not 15,000, 1,551. And I'll just make it a whole number. Now, how about our ending inventory? Well, we know we sold 80, right? But we had a total of 115 to start with. 
So what do we have in ending inventory? What's left? Well, I'll just do the calculation over here. It's 115 minus 80. And that's what we have left over. And you should get 35 units. Now, multiply that ending inventory times our cost per unit. We keep using the same number. And there you go. Let's multiply that out. 35 times $19.39. Six, and I'll round this up, $679. Round it up. That's a dollar amount. And that's about it. Weighted average is not that bad, honestly. You have to get your total cost per or total cost of all the units right here divided by the total units here to get your cost per unit. That's what we did. Then you just assign that to cost of the goods sold and then assign that to any inventory over here. Sorry about the arrow. That's a bad arrow. Whatever you get it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna write that in. But anyway, that's weighted average in a nutshell. Hopefully that video was helpful. Once again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.